All right, with some basics out of the way, let's go ahead and build like a sign in or a sign up form just so we can get a better sense of what we'll uh, actually be doing in a real situation. So uh, what our sign in or sign up form is going to have is basically just a email field and then a password field. So let's go ahead and build it. Um, what we're going to do, we'll just start with, go ahead and add a little space down here, but we're going to have two different text inputs. Those text inputs will each uh, be able to capture their errors. And then inside of our initial values, let's go ahead. Well, we'll start, we'll start on the styling just so we can have that. Um, what I'm going to do is pass a view here and then I'll add a style to this of a margin horizontal of 20. We'll do a margin vertical of five, just so it's a little easier to see when there's multiple fields. Um, so I'll save this. I need to import view from react native. All right, excellent. So I'm also going to go ahead and just add a little uh, label up here. We'll say email here. That's also to the text input itself. We'll just say John Doe at example.com to this text. Let's add some styles here. Margin bottom three. Okay. So we've got our field here. When we press submit, it's still saying name is required. So let's go ahead and update that. So our styles are consistent. That can stay the same. Uh, our on checks on change text. We'll want to change this to email. And again, we want to make sure. So here we've, we're updating the email uh, property. So we want to actually look for our errors on email here as well. So then we can go up to our initial value. We've got email and we'll come back to our validation in a moment. Um, let's also add password in here while we're at it. Okay. And then we can go ahead and copy this whole block. We'll actually refactor this to be a bit cleaner in a future video. Um, we can go ahead and just pass password here. And then since this is a password, let's go ahead and set this to a secure text entry. So we've got our two different fields. Let's go ahead and see what happens with our placeholder when it's a secure text. Okay. So we can add our email address in here and we can add in our password here. That all looks good. Uh, we also need to update our fields here to be password. Okay. And there's our kind of our basic form um, showing up. And if we go through, nothing's happening at this point uh, because we don't have any validation. So let's go ahead, add our validation in here. So we'll just go ahead, delete all of that. And we'll go ahead, add our property. We know this is going to be a string. Let's go ahead and give this a label of email just so it shows up before any of our error messages. Uh, we can also actually say this is something Yep does. We can say this needs to be an email. Uh, so it'll be, it should look like a valid email address basically is what Yep is going to check. And then finally, we'll go ahead and say that this is required. Likewise for password, we're going to say that this should be a string. We'll set the label to password and then this should also be required. Just like we've kind of got these custom functions for, uh, or we've got a custom function for email, we can go ahead and actually set up a minimum and we'll say the minimum length should be two. We can set a specific message for this. Uh, it seems a bit short and we can also set a maximum password. Let's just say this should be 10 and we can say, you know, real error message for a 10 character password limit. We can say we prefer insecure systems. Try a shorter password. Okay. So now if we look at this and we try to submit it, we can see these are both required. Um, it's when I update this, we can see email must be a valid email. And then if I add, make it look valid, it'll show up. Likewise with a password, if I just add an A there, it'll show our too short error message. If I add too many characters, it'll give us our too long of a, uh, error message saying we prefer insecure systems. Try a shorter password. Okay. So that's pretty much everything we need, but there's one little thing left to do. So if I refresh the app and I actually go between an input, so say you auto focus, we can go ahead and set that. I think it's auto focus. Yeah. So say they just 
you know, start here and they just click down to the password field. We can actually show this error message right now uh, by basically saying this field has been touched. If it's been touched it, and it fails validation, show that error message. And to do this, what we can do is actually add another prop to our uh, text input and we can say on blur and on blur is going to be called when that text input kind of loses focus. It had focus and then it loses focus. So we can say formic props dot handle blur and then we can go ahead and pass the key. And basically this will update a property on the form that says if the uh, field has been touched and there's, it'll say the user has seen this field essentially. Uh, so if we go forward now, you can see that even though we didn't press submit yet, our error messages are showing up. So just so, you know, in this case where the password is showing up, even though the user's never seen that, we can go ahead and just like we've got our email here, uh, we can go ahead and say, add two ampersands here. Instead of errors, we can go ahead and say touched. We'll go ahead and do the same thing down here for the password. So we'll change email, email to password. And then we'll also get this on blur down on our password field. So now if I'm automatically focusing on this input, I go to the next one, we can see the error message showing up here and we focus on the password. So when we blur on this, it'll go ahead and give us that error message. Uh, that way you can kind of dynamically validate the fields as the user's going through them. So they don't have to fill everything out, submit it, and then find something's invalid. You can go ahead and validate as they're going, which I always like because, you know, I can go back and fix something really quick instead of having to finish it, try and find that field uh, that I messed up. So with that, that's kind of the basics of uh, how you would go ahead and build a actual form with Formic and Yup. And then what we'll do in the subsequent videos is just start to uh, build this out in a way where you could build like a reusable library of form components that kind of tap into Formic and Yup so that you can stop repeating a lot of this on change text, on blur, uh, styling, all that stuff, and still have all of your validation stuff kind of built in.